Welcome to the Invested Dads Podcast, simplifying financial topics so that you can take action and make your financial situation better, helping you to understand the current world of financial planning and investments. Here are your hosts, Josh Robb and Austin Wilson. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back to the Invested Dads Podcast, a podcast where we take you on a journey to better your financial future. I'm Austin Wilson, co-portfolio manager at Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. And I'm Josh Robb, director of wealth management at Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. Austin, how can people help us with our podcast? We would love it if you'd subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, so you get new episodes when they drop on Thursdays, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And always know, you can check out our website for any questions you have. You can get in contact with us through the website. So check out theinvesteddads.com today, Josh. Yes. We are going to be talking about the so-called sequence of success. Okay. And how that sequence leads to reduced poverty okay. levels. Buy a lottery ticket, win with the lottery ticket. And sequence you're of success. Although we know the statistics of people who win the lottery. Go broke. Go broke. So let's talk about what to do to avoid living in poverty. Now, this is all highly debated, but factually also very true okay so william a galston he was the former deputy assistant for domestic policy under president clinton in the 90s he wrote extensively on how to avoid poverty and found some common themes among successful individuals and families additionally ron haskins and isabel sawhill got the ball rolling with a book called creating an opportunity society which called for a change in social norms to bring back the success sequence as the expected path for young americans now this research actually comes back from someone named wendy wang and brad wilcox there was a book written they observe 90 percent of millennials who follow what has been called the success sequence that is who get at least a high school degree work and then marry before having children in that order are not poor by the time they reach their prime young adult years, which is 28 to 34. So breaking those down, there are three things that all this research and all these researchers have found okay. that matter and statistically reduce chances of poverty a lot. Okay. So those three things and sequence matters as number one, graduate from high school Okay. at a minimum, but all graduate right. from high school. Number two, get a full-time job. All right. Get a full-time job. And number three, wait until you are married to have children. Those three things in order, sequence, reduce your poverty chances very, very significantly. Now, some people would actually argue that just graduating high school alone and then working full-time is the only factors that really matter. Because those two seem like those are... A high school diploma at least gets you the opportunity for yep. certain things. And then getting a full-time job, that makes sense, right? right? If you hold a full-time job, you're fine. But you're telling me that that waiting to have kids till after you're married is actually a big yeah, deal. The data actually backs this up. So the results from all these studies indicate that after controlling for a range of different factors, the order of marriage and parenthood in millennials' lives is significantly associated with their financial well-being in the prime of young adulthood. So boiling this all down... Compared with the path of having a baby first, marrying before children more than doubles young adults' odds of being middle or top income earners. Meanwhile, if you put marriage first, you also reduce the odds of young adults being in poverty by 60% versus having a baby first. So the order actually matters. And this is something that has become more and more socially normal Mm -hmm. to not wait till you get married to have children, correct? So just it's more normal all the time. It's been trending that way for quite some time, but it's statistically proven to not be the best financial thing. Interesting. And the real question is why, right? Yes, that is a great question. So aside from you may have philosophical or, you know, moral objections to that, which I can understand, but we're looking at data here. Right. The biggest difficulty is this is single parenthood, hard to work full time. Oh my goodness. So Being if, a single parent if is If you're not just, married, yes. so if you're married, you can split the kid time and do what you need to do. Someone in the house can work full time, or you can both work part time and make enough to be a full time earner or whatever. Yep, and and be okay, right? If you are not married, you have a much less likely chance of being able to do that. So yep. that's the that's really why that part of the sequence is so important. That makes sense. And because overlooked. if you have a single income and a kid, you're either needing to work less to take care of the kid, or you're paying and for tra- childcare, which is not cheap. It's not cheap. And with only a single income, it makes it a lot harder for that to be successful. Exactly. Okay. I got you. You want more numbers? I do. I, I love got numbers. more numbers. So some of these numbers are like bookends. 94% of young adults from lower income families who mm-hmm. followed that three-step sequence okay. are historically not in poverty level 
Right. Yeah. Ninety four percent. So they come out of poverty level. Yep. They're coming from they're low income. From a low income background. Yes. And if they make those decisions, they can get themselves up out and be ninety four percent of the time out of the poverty. Out of the poverty level. Yep. That is incredible. If you come from someone from a middle or high income mm-hmm. background, those numbers are even better. Okay. At ninety nine percent, if you follow oh, wow. that sequence. So that sequence works. Mm-hmm. So there are a couple other ways to look at this numbers, but directionally it does differ between lower income backgrounds and high, middle or higher income okay. backgrounds. People who come from a lower income background have a lower success rate across the board. And that's just, yep. there's a lot of reasons for that. But still, it, these this sequence really, as we just talked about, really ha- benefits them as well. But obviously, people from a middle or higher income background, that's even a little bit better. So okay. here are a couple more. Because they kind of have a cushion safety yeah. net of family yep. with a little bit of help or wealth there. Exactly. I, okay, I get that. Mm-hmm. So here's a couple more statistics and they kind of flow through that three-step process. Yep. So 54% of lower income young adults who missed all three steps were living in poverty. That's over half yep. who did not do any of those three things. And 38% of those with a middle or high income background were living in poverty. So again, a little bit of a disparity there. of people coming from a lower income background who failed to graduate high school were in poverty versus 22% for those with middle or high income backgrounds. That goes down to 13% of lower income young adults who graduated high school and had a full-time job were in poverty. So only 13%, and that was 8% from a middle or high income background. Mm -hmm. And then the inverse of those numbers I just talked about, only 6% of lower income young adults who followed the entire sequence, all three steps, including getting married before having children in addition to the other two, were in poverty. And that was only 1% of those with a middle or high income okay. background. So what that means is, again, there is a statistically a 94% chance that if you follow those three steps, you will be out of poverty if you started in poverty or not in poverty still if you yep. weren't, and a 99% chance if you're coming from a middle or high income background. Okay. So the sequence works. Yep. The numbers work. It's really common sense. And that's something that I think is is not talked about enough is this is the way society has been built. Yes. And when you don't do it in this order, things don't work right. Mm-hmm. So that's why the numbers work out the way they do. But very interesting. Lots of data to back that up. But Josh, before we talk a little bit more, let's have a dead joke. Okay. And so my daughter got a knock-knock joke book the other day. So her and I were, were reading a couple of those. And so I'm going to give you a knock knock joke knock, knock. for the dad joke of the day. Yep. Knock knock. Mm, who's there? Mikey. Mikey who? My key doesn't work. Can you let me in? Ah, Mikey. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I think knock knock jokes are kind of they're going to come back. They're, I mean they're they're fun. They're classic. Yeah. I There's almost a, forgot what to say when you uh, said knock knock. Uh, the who? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who's there? I haven't had a good knock knock joke in a while. All right. So something that is interesting when I was growing up is that without even realizing it. You know, my dad instilled this to me as a mm-hmm. young age, this kind of thought about a sequence of what you should do before things happen. Right. Graduating in high school, waiting to have children until I was married, that was kind of always assumed. But he always told me, don't get married until you have a good job. Okay. Don't have a baby until you have a place to raise them. That makes sense. And then he always said, just go to work every day and you won't you won't want for food. You know, you'll be fine. Yes. You'll have food. You'll have all your needs met yep. if you just go to work every day. And that kind of really just changed the way that I viewed life from a very young age and kind of set me and my siblings up for success. Um, You know what all this sounds like? What? If you simplify, break this all down, is to plan ahead and be more proactive than reactive, right? Don't get married till you have a good job, right? Yeah. You, You make sure you're thinking through and setting yourself up with a plan. Don't have a baby until you have a place to raise them. Same idea. It's yep. a, it takes nine months for that baby to develop and grow. So you do have some time, I yeah, guess, if you yeah. don't don't have a place yet. But the idea being just prepare, mm-hmm. plan ahead. Yeah. Don't be so sporadic, but just have it. And then show up every day, which is, again, planning ahead. Plan Make ahead. the right decisions so that the day before you're not doing something dumb where the next day you don't want to go to work. And be consistent. Consistency. Consistency oh. compounds, right? So yep. just go to work every single day. So I always believed, you know, outside of those things. Yep. That's where trouble can really occur. And one thing that I've really got to think about as I was doing a little bit of research and putting together notes for this podcast is that this so-called success sequence, those three steps we talked about earlier, this was once common sense, right? This was was really how the majority of people lived. And what that did was it made an economy, and and specifically here in the United States, a nation that had growth 
It had Mm -hmm. financial stability. And that's becoming a little less normal today. Uh, Population growth, not so good. We got lots of impoverished people around the country and stuff like that. And I think that young people around the country and potentially around the world are just are, are just not being taught these things about how to plan, how to mm-hmm. think ahead when they're thinking about having a family, thinking about becoming an adult, thinking about having a life and not being, you know, a, a resource drag, mm-hmm. but a resource contributor to the economy and yep. society as a whole. Yep. And to be clear, you know, I, we, we both grew up in a very comfortable lifestyle, right? Both of our families, we, we weren't, I would say, you or I in the lower income side of the world. Right. But I did, for a handful of years, work in the nonprofit world, and I worked with families that were like that. And so we, I get, and I know you do as well, like, yeah. it's, we're not making this sound easy. No. And these are simple ideas, but they're not easy to obtain. For instance, graduating high school, that's... It sounds like, oh, that's common sense. Right. Well, when let's say, for instance, your family has a hard time putting food on the table and you have the choice between going out and getting a job right. to earn some money so that you and your siblings can eat or pay the electric bill so you have heat versus going to school, I get yep. I get that. I've been around and been with families that had to make that hard decision. Yep. So again, we're not making light of that, that situation. But if you can say, hey, 94% of the people who do this get out of that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I know that a lot of people that I worked with, if you gave them and showed them that opportunity, yeah. they're I mean, they're hard workers. They'll find a way to finish high school yep. and do those things. Well, right? that's just it is if you're off track, if you haven't maybe checked check those three boxes mm-hmm. or whatever, done it in the right order, it's not too late. Right. You can jump on track and do that to starting today or work towards yes. it, heading yes. that direction. Yeah. This we are not here to talk about how there are people how there aren't people who have hard situations. Right. There are people who have hard situations. There are people who made mistakes. Mm-hmm. A lot of this is just making mistakes. And okay, we all make mistakes, right? But there is a chance to get back on track right. and statistically help you and your family in the future, right? Yes. No one is unless they're like very close to the end of their life, there's time to turn it around. Right. right. There always is. There's yep. time to turn it around and make choices to get on the right track. This is not making light of people in tough situations. Right. But we we now know, and if maybe you didn't hear any of, maybe until today you haven't heard any of this, mm-hmm. but we know some very basic things to get you moving in the right direction. Correct. This is also encouraging for those who are on mm-hmm. the right track, right? So maybe you are, maybe you did graduate high school. You're working Check. full time. Check. You you got married and you're thinking about having a baby or you had kids, whatever. You you're on the right track mm-hmm. and you just keep doing what you're doing. Yep. And uh, planning ahead, being responsible, and you won't be in poverty. You may you know life might not always be easy, but just keep going to work every day and you'll be yes. all right. Yep. So. so that that is again we're both again when you look at these things, two of the three can be accomplished at any point in time. You can if you haven't, you can always graduate high school and you can always get a full time job. You yep. can't undo a baby that shows up. And yep. that's again, but going back to it though, again as you walk through some of those things, like just those top two give you a really good chance of success. Yep. And that kid who's special and unique and awesome, it's fine. That's that's not a regret at any point. But right. talking to somebody who hasn't done that yet that's the point to say, hey, here's the plan yeah. to give you the highest chance of success. Yep. So exciting. Thank you, Austin, for putting that together. As you talk through, those are the steps. Those are the beginning points, right? Next then would be to go and look at some of our suggestions on how do you start saving once yep. you have that full-time job? Because this gets you out of poverty. But for a lot of people, their goal is to set their next generation up, those kids that you have to help them get even farther along than you were. I was so. thinking, you know, we, we everyone more knows kind of the Dave Ramsey baby steps, right? This is like pre-baby steps. Yeah, this is like toddler. This is like, like infant steps. The, step. the like, crawling, rolling. This is like inside baby inside belly yes. steps. Like this is before you even get to baby steps. Yep. Uh, this is just like general life advice yes. to set yourself up before you can do the baby steps. That's right. And all those things. But or yeah. you can avoid all the baby steps. If you graduate high school, get a full-time job and wait to have kids... You may not be in debt. You might Do not even yeah. worry about baby steps. You just start shoving money away yep. and planning for the future. Well, thank you for listening. You had someone asking about something like this. Hey, I, I just see a lot of poverty. What can people do? Yep. Well, here's some ideas. So share this episode with them. Email us any ideas to hello at theinvesteddads.com and uh, join us for our next episode. And until next time, have a good one. All right. Talk to you later. Bye. 
Thank you for listening to the Invested Dads podcast. This episode has ended, but your journey towards a better financial future doesn't have to. Head over to theinvesteddads.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode and we had a positive impact on your life, leave us a review. Click subscribe and don't miss the next episode. Josh Robb and Austin Wilson work for Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. All opinions expressed by Josh, Austin, or any podcast guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinions of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon for investment decisions. Clients of Hicks and Zerker Capital Management may maintain positions in the securities discussed in this podcast. There is no guarantee that the statements, opinions, or forecasts provided herein will prove to be correct. Past performance may not be indicative of future results. Indices are not available for direct investment. Any investor who attempts to mimic the performance of an index would incur fees and expenses, which would reduce returns. Securities investing involves risk, including the potential for loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment plan or strategy will be successful.